advisors struggle when it comes to communicating with prospects? What are some exciting ways that you can enhance your message? Well, I'm joined today by Bob Huntley to discuss just that. Bob, welcome. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having me. So, Bob, why do advisors struggle so much when it comes to communicating with clients? Well, Matt, we're in a very complex business. Um, I mean, you, you just have so many things you have to learn about and so many things you have to do during your day. So it's complicated. And um, we're so busy doing it, doing it, doing it, that it's very uh, hard, unless you're intentional about it, to step back and work on the business, not just in the business. Michael Gerber wrote about that in his book, E-Myth, right? It's, I mean, it's a great book. But I remember uh, George Bernard Shaw had a quote that most people think once or twice a year. I've made an international reputation thinking once or twice a week. That's what we're talking about. Advisors are so busy, they don't take the time or have the time to just think about the business. And who, are, who am I? What do I believe? Why do I believe it? And why does it matter? And I think you, you've got to start there because everything flows from that and nobody else in the firm can do it but the advisor themselves. With that kind of approach, you guys have really effectively grown. And tell me about some of your tips uh, to creatively you know, tell your story. Well, I had, um, I, I'll start by just saying when we nailed down our, our core values, that helped a lot because it flowed, everything else flowed out of that. I had lunch uh, a number of years ago with a buddy of mine who had uh, done extremely well in his career and become CEO of a Fortune 500 company, and he had a family uh, get started later in life. And he was telling me that he grew up in very modest means, but he was afraid his kids were growing up in a very different circumstance. So what he decided to do was come up with an acronym where his core values were on the refrigerator. And that let him talk about those all the time with his kids, and he made sure they didn't miss that. Mm -hmm. And so I took that challenge and I kind of thought about it. I said, all right, I'm going to do that. Once I got the answers to that, it made it a lot easier for me then to work on you know, what is it we're uniquely standing for in this community as far as our practice goes? What's our, uh, our, our, our primary mission? Why are we here? Why do we exist? The more clarity you get with that, uh, the better you're able to communicate it. And so for me, all of that thinking that I was talking about earlier, I try to filter it through clarity, simplicity, and systems. But it starts with being real clear about who you are and what you believe, and then trying to simplify the message as much as you can so people can actually understand what it is we're trying to say. So with CSS, Clarity, Simplicity, Systems, was that what you post on your refrigerator? No, not, that's no. not it. For me, it came no, out, my it? acronym is SURE, S-H-O-R-E. Okay. Simplicity, Honesty, Optimism, Responsibility, and Excellence. Mm -hmm. And so what I realized quickly was that it didn't just apply to what I wanted my kids to get from me, but it applied to our business. And uh, we actually have it as part of our collateral material. And, and in fact, to show you how kind of a system can come from that, um, we have a director of communications on our team, and she helps with getting our messaging out on our social media, website, and everything. And one of the things she regularly rotates in are messages that are consistent with those five core values. We created a system out of that, but it started with me. Who else but me can answer those questions? And I think we're so busy in this industry uh, trying to do everything we, try to, we have to do, we just, oftentimes, we don't take the time to, to really step back and say, you know, these basic things. Who are we? What do we stand for? And did this start to really appeal and generate interest from clients and prospects? Yeah, because uh, most folks have heard that it's better to be uh, clear about those things because you, yeah, you may repel some people, but that's okay. What you want is you want to attract people that believe the same way you do. And um, we've just found that by being consistent in our messaging uh, and it being consistent with who we really are, it comes across as authentic. and. This is a relationship business. People respond to that. And it's helped you to get new relationships with prospects. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also other, uh, other you know, professionals that we network with. Of course. Of course. Now, a lot of advisors tell me, I just don't have time for this. I don't have time to kind of engage this way and to do all this work. What do you say to those advisors? I, I say it's one of the biggest mistakes you can make if you don't make time. For me, the answer was simple. What I started doing was going on uh, three or four times a week. I have a three to five, maybe six mile walk. I go somewhere where there's not many people, there's no screens distracting me, and it's just me outside getting a little exercise, but mainly I'm thinking. That's when I get away from everything. And um, I carry my phone with me, I record ideas. I always think they're great, but then a couple of days later, maybe 
nine are bad, but one's <laughs> a gem, right? And so over time, you, you figure this stuff out, you know, and, and um, I also, when I get back to the car, I have a little notepad and I, I dump my ideas down on there. So I'm getting a little exercise, but that's my time that I've created and everybody's different, but you've just got to build that margin in. If you don't do it, you're just never gonna have the ability to really think long and hard and deeply about what makes you unique. So it's all about making time to be creative to get that next great client. Absolutely. 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 Well, Bob, thank you so much. Some great insights, and I'm trying to add a three to five mile walk to my routine, too. <laughs> it's a great idea. It is. It is. All right. Bob, thank Thanks, you so Matt. much. For Investment News, I'm Matt Ackerman.